All right, guys, we're back with another educational video. And this week, wait, wait, we have breaking, breaking news. Just when you thought it was safe to drink diet drinks again, there's a new study. We're talking about sucralose today. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. A new study got published demonstrating that a derivative or an intermediate or impurity in sucralose, which is sucralose 6-acetate, is genotoxic. Oh! So of course, that headline, sucralose impurity genotoxic, or in some cases they just said sucralose genotoxic, obviously got a lot of play. I always like to try to do this thing, which is read the full study before I actually form an opinion of said study. So the first thing I noticed was it was an in vitro study. Now, what does an in vitro study mean? That means essentially it was in the equivalent of a Petri dish, right? So you have cultured cells that you're applying something to and seeing what happens. That's the first limitation. A Petri dish is not a whole human body. In fact, there are things that you can apply to lots of different cells that are toxic in vitro that do absolutely nothing in the human body. For example, if you take brain cells and you put amino acids like glutamate on them, that will be neurotoxic. And yet you can consume things containing glutamate like every single protein source in existence and have absolutely no problem because a Petri dish is not a full human body. That being said, I looked through the study. It's not even sucralose. It's an intermediate in the production of sucralose and really shouldn't be present in the products, but there are some that have impurities. They found that this impurity could basically break apart DNA. Okay, now that sounds crazy scary, all right? But my first thought is, well, what do we see in the human randomized control trials when we give sucralose? We don't see people just falling over and dying. We don't tend to see differences or large differences in the rate of cancer. And you don't really see differences in the rate of cancer once you control for some extraneous variables in people who use sucralose versus those who don't. And you don't see increases in the risk of cardiovascular disease. So what's happening? When I went and read the full study, it was only genotoxic in the three highest doses of sucralose 6-acetate. In fact, in most of the things they analyzed to measure DNA damage, it was only significantly different than the control in the absolute highest dosage. I looked for what the lowest dosage that caused any form of DNA damage was. And it worked out to 353 micrograms per milliliter. Then I wondered what concentration do you find it in in the body when you drink a drink containing sucralose? And what you find is the highest amount is 400 nanograms per milliliters. Now you may ask, what is the conversion like? What does that end up different? 8,000 fold. So the lowest dose of sucralose 6 acetate that caused DNA damage was 900 times greater than the concentration of sucralose than you can produce in the body. All the dosages below that, no difference. You could say sucralose 6-acetate is not sucralose and therefore you cannot carry over the concentrations of the difference. Well, you're gonna have a really hard time convincing me that sucralose, the main product, and sucralose 6-acetate, an impurity, which is probably present in very small amounts in sucralose-containing products, is somehow gonna produce a higher concentration than the major component of those products. In fact, you're probably looking at multiple thousands of fold greater levels of sucralose 6-acetate than you could ever get in the body. Where do I put this study on the hierarchy of evidence? It's not off the hierarchy of evidence, but it's pretty dang low because one, it is not a physiological model, and two, it is not a physiological dose that caused the problems. Even when we look at something uh, like 
they, they noted that it seemed to cause inhibition of cytochrome P450 and they were worried about that for liver toxicity. Once again, the dosage required to cause that was around one micromolar. That would equate to about half a nanogram per milliliter and then when we convert that, we find it is still 500 times greater of a dose than we would likely produce in the bloodstream. Once again, I'm not saying this doesn't warrant further investigation. It certainly does. What we need to happen next is we need to incorporate some kind of rodent model where rodents are consuming an amount of uh, sucralose 6-acetate that could be found as an impurity, like a physiological dose. And then we need to see, do we still see these same outcomes in animal model? And then if we do, the next step is to move into a cohort of humans who either consume sucralose or don't consume sucralose just in their diet, and then looking at markers of DNA damage. But my guess is you are not going to see a difference because we are talking about such unphysiological doses of this that you would never get in the human body. It is an interesting outcome, but it simply doesn't apply to a whole human body. So if everybody could not just flip out Every time a new in vitro study comes out, that would be great. Please keep in mind these news organizations do not care about the veracity of the study. They don't care about how the study was conducted. They don't care about how it fits with the overall body of evidence. What they care about is getting you to go, oh my God, and click, 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 because that's more money, money, money for them. The answers to your questions are money, money, and money. Please keep in mind, before you send me this stuff and flip out, just look at even the abstract of the study and go, hmm, in vitro, I wonder if that's actually physiologically relevant. All right, guys, if you like these research breakdowns, make sure you subscribe to my research review reps every month. We review five studies in nutrition or exercise, and we break them down in a way that's palatable and easy to understand for anybody, thus helping you figure out what's legit and what's not, and how those results actually apply to you. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next week.